In this video, I have the privilege of inviting Nate from the Mido developer team to give us a short demonstration of how to use Mido in action. So Mido is a Python library that will allow you to have spreadsheet functionality right inside the Jupyter Notebook. And so the topics covered today will include how you can merge data frames, how you could perform commonly used spreadsheet functions, how to filter data, how to pivot the data, how you can save the analysis that you are doing for reuse in the future. And best of all, Mido will be able to generate the corresponding Python code as you edit using the point and click interface of the Mito. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. Hey, I'm Nate. I'll be showing you Mito, a fast, repeatable spreadsheet that's built for all of your data analysis and reporting needs. Mito is different from Excel and Google Sheets because it turns all of your edits into professional Python code, making it super easy to change, audit, and rerun your data analyses. So let's get started. We've already got a Mito notebook up and ready to go. At the top, you'll see all the Python code we need to write during the entire analysis. Let's get started by displaying a Mito sheet. Once the sheet is displayed, we can start exploring our data. It seems like we've got two data sets here. User info contains information about users, including their ID, whether or not they're a paid or a free user, as well as how old their account is. User visits seems to be from a different data source. It's got an account ID as well, but also the total number of visits they've taken to our website ever, the number of visits they've made during a weekday, as well as when they started visiting our website. We'll now use Mido to understand the difference in user behavior, depending on whether or not the user is a free or a paid user. The first thing that we can do is we can merge these two data sets together. Because they share a user ID column, we can click merge, and using Mido's merge functionality, we can combine user info and user visits upon the shared merge key into a new data set. When we click merge, two things happen. First, a new data set was created. This contains all of the information from both of the previous data sets, but now it's all in one line. So for a single user, we can see all of the information about them. Second, and this is the powerful part, Mido generates Python code that corresponds to your edit. Where we did a merge in the sheet, we got a merge in the code. As we'll show in the rest of this demo, this generated Python code will allow you to use a spreadsheet to build quick, powerful, and repeatable spreadsheet analyses. Now that we've got all of our data in one place, let's figure out how many visits are coming from free versus paid users on different days of the week. First, we can add a new column to our data to perform a calculation. In this column, we can write any spreadsheet formula that we would in Excel or Google Sheets. Here, it's just a simple subtraction. But we support all commonly used spreadsheet functions. We can also rename our column to keep our spreadsheet clean. Behind the scenes, Mito continues to generate production-ready Python code that corresponds to those edits. All I had to do was edit the spreadsheet. Next, we can use a powerful part of any spreadsheet analysis, a pivot table. We will use a pivot table to break down free versus paid users, and we'll figure out exactly how their website visiting habits differ. After clicking the group button, we'll transform the data by selecting our user type as the rows. Since we're interested in comparing the number of weekend and weekday visits of these users, we can choose to aggregate weekday visits by mean and weekend visits by mean as well. And then we'll click group. We can check our newly generated pivot table to observe that paid users end up visiting actually just a little bit more than free users, both during the weekday and on the weekend. Again, Mito generates Python code that corresponds to this pivot behind the scenes. We'll finish our analysis by seeing if there's any relationship between how long someone has paid to be a user and how many visits they take. To do so, we'll first filter just down to paid users. Now, let's sort our data by account age to see if we can see any relationship. Interesting. It seems like total visits are going down over time. Let's verify that with another pivot. Again, since we're interested in breaking down by account age, we can select that as rows. We can select weekday visits to calculate the average. And again, weekend visits to calculate the average and click group. And if we look at our new data frame, it seems like as accounts get older, the number of weekday visits stays relatively the same while the number of weekend visits decreases dramatically. Awesome. Let's wrap this analysis here. I think we've got some really good insights to share with the Mito team. Now that we've completed this analysis, we can save it. Saving an analysis allows us to reuse it at any point in the future on new data. 
Because Mito is powered by Python, you only need to do any analysis task once, and you can replay it as many times as you want. Let's just save this as visits analysis. Now, let's imagine a week passes and we get some new data about our users in a similar format to before. All we have to do to repeat our analysis is click the Repeat Saved Analysis button, select our visits analysis, and click Replay. And Mito works its magic. We can check out the same pivot tables with our new data. And it looks like the weekend visits trend changes a little bit on this new data set. Behind the scenes, Mito uses the generated Python code below to quickly and reliably replay your analysis and save you time. If you're interested in checking out the product, you can visit our website at trymito.io to get early access. We can't wait to speed up your analysis workflow. Thanks. Thanks, Nate, for the awesome demonstration. And if you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet done so, hit on the notification bell in order to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.